with our curfew. Mm. I hope we don't screw up tonight. Oh, really? Oh, my God. Filming it. Like it. 
The final Riot tour was the most frustrating tour we've ever had to put together in the history of our touring lives. You know, we always try to make our show like fun, obviously, and and different from the last show we put on. We're all getting really scared because we knew it was going to be the final Riot tour and we really needed to go out with something big and um, just not only for the fans but for ourselves wanted to just give it one last, you know, oomph. Hoorah. Well, we went over to Josh and Zach's house and we were up in their room and just sitting down trying to get all of our songs put together, maybe a set list and figure out if we wanted to do any covers or uh, what we wanted to do acoustically. This is the problem we always run into. God. It's usually what we do before every tour. We take about a week to practice and um, construct a set list that we think is going to be uh, or fit the tour uh, well. We're, uh, we're putting our set list together. Well, we're going to attempt to put our set list together. It's going to be Oh, <laughs> ow, this hurts, it's oh so my big. Gosh, <laughs> it, was, it was fun to, for us to even just get together and not really have to work, but just kind of discuss things. It was kind of fun, so. I was late to it, so I feel really bad about that. So I'm sorry, guys. I love you. I'll be on time next time. All right, so it's day one. Practice for the final Riot Tour. We're all here except for Haley, of course. We'll see how it goes. We went to a rehearsal space to practice for the tour. We had our production set up and all her crew come up. So we're in the we're in the rehearsal hall, all trying to figure it all out, figure out the show, the set list, the look, the everything, and and uh, it was just being difficult. It's always hard to start off from scratch because that's, you know, that's the hardest part. The main thing is to come up with an intro for us and then an outro, because those are the most important parts of the show, I think, because that's what kids remember, I think, the first song and, and the last song. That's what we deal with every practice. FYI, Haley just woke up and will be there ASAP. Hey, at least it wasn't me today, really, sort of. Yeah, it's never Haley. Oh, wait. It's always Haley. It was very difficult because it's like our last tour in the U.S. on this album cycle, and we wanted it to be, a, you know, a great show. This is the part where we sit forever. We sit forever and try to figure out something, but now we won't figure out anything. And then somebody will be like, okay, let's just do something. And then we'll figure it out like two days later. We'll just play nothing today. Once we started, you know, rehearsing, it, it it got better, and we just jammed on a couple ideas, and you know, I'd throw something out, like, hmm, we could try this. They're like, yeah, that's awesome. We worked on it; it sounded awesome, and we went right into four pessimists, and we're like, dude, that's so sweet. And Haley finally got there because she's always late to practice, and we were like, Haley, what do you think of this? We played it for her, and she was like, eh. we were like, are you kidding me? We could not come up with anything to save our lives. I wanted to open with That's What You Get because that was that's the current single, um, or it was the current single when we were out. But um, like no one wanted to do that but me. <laughs> Day two. Trying to figure out an intro still. Everybody has to like it, so we kind of just scrapped it and tried it tried it with that's what you get. We tried this, we just moved, you know, changed keys. Didn't work. So we were like, man, this sucks. Basically wasted a whole nother day. Uh, it was hard for us to even get along how, how much we were just like going head to head with everything. We just fought for like three hours and then left. We hate intros. We're not good at them. Luckily, the third day, the clouds parted. 
something happened. And on that third day, we all just came in and it seemed like all of us had cleared our slate and we're like, you know what, let's go in here and do what we need to do. Zach's idea was to start with Born for This. And we got it together really quickly. We came up with the intro. You know, I just started playing. I was like, what if I start playing? Then Taylor starts playing and we slowly add one member at a time. It actually ended up being really cool. It's like my, it's my favorite intro we've done besides Let the Flames Begin. <laughs> it was perfect. It worked out great because, like, it it just sums up our year with Riot. And we came up with a great intro. It made us all feel really good about the tour and got us excited about it again. We finally finished with rehearsals and we hit the road. Yeah man, yep, I'm a, such a rock star that I get that bus to myself. Awesome. Nah, just kidding. As you might know, this is the final riot. The last one that you're gonna get. And in case you don't know already, my friends, I'll tell you, we are Paramount! So let's get this show going, everyone. Two hands in the air, as high as they might. Look at that. That's the Chicago I remember. <laughs> I see some jazz fingers. <laughs> what about this? Can you snap your fingers with me? Feel that rhythm. That's nice. All right, so I'm gonna count us off and then we shall rock. A one, a two.
breath that you breathe, just breathe it in, yeah, yeah, well, you're just a mess, you do all this big talk and so now let's see you walk it oh, so
hide your broken things A memory remains I give it all my oxygen To let the flames begin To let the flames begin Oh, glory If you ask any of their guys what it's like to live on a tour bus, they'll have one perspective, or you know, each guy might have their own thing, but they're all dudes. I have never toured on a bus with another girl. I've always been the only girl since I was 16. 
there are times when I want to rip my hair out. But for the most part, I think the guys have it worse than me. Haley can be like just one of us dudes and you know hang out with us and um, just have a good time. And then other times she can be really girly and she, she likes makeup and all that kind of stuff. But it's, it's kind of weird having a girl in a band, but you know, you'd think it, it, it could be a lot like worse. Like having Haley is, is basically like having a dude, but not really, that sounds bad. But she's just one of us guys and well, she's like a sister. You know, the guys are probably thinking, yeah, we're going on tour, woo! And they get there and they're like, oh, we can't be guys, there's a girl here. Like, I probably ruined so much fun for them. So let's be honest, I'm not really getting the, the bad end of the stick. The guys have to, you know, they're this close to dude freedom. Like, just being there, like, broing down. And there I am right in the middle. The bus is an interesting way of living. It's a lot smaller than it seems. It's like, oh, that's awesome. You know, it'd be sweet to tour in a bus, but with 10 to 12 people on a bus, it's basically like, I don't know, it's, it's weird. Bunks are kind of weird. They're, they're like little coffins that you get in and it's scary when your driver hits the rumble strip or something. Like, think about it, if you get in a wreck, you're not buckled in, you're just gonna fly like a little, just a little insect, it just gets flicked. Jeremy's always, Jeremy always sleeps in until about 2 in the afternoon because he stays up till uh, about 5 or 6 in the morning, no joke. That's gonna wake him up. Jeremy, wake up. Jeremy! Oh, Jamie! Jeremy! Uh, We're filming a DVD, turn Jeremy! Turn the light on. Turn the light on. Jeremy! It smells like... It smells like a hamster. Every door, it smells like a hamster. I think it's fun. I think it's really fun to live on on a bus. Like, I sleep I sleep so much better in, the, in a bunk. I think because it's like small, if no one wakes me up and the bus is still rolling, I'll sleep till 3 in the afternoon. Living on a bus is awesome. We actually kept our buses really clean on this tour, for the most part. Well, I thought it was pretty clean anyways, but whatever. You, you tend to eat a lot of Hot Pockets and peanut butter and jelly and frozen like ice pops because there's a freezer. And you eat cereal all the time. Cap'n Crunch. It's on our rider every day. We get a box every day. And we just eat it every night. And that's why we have rolls. It definitely beats a 12 passenger van, that's for sure. All right. You guys still feeling good out there? Man. Well, this is, this is incredible. Chicago, I don't say this. I really don't. I promise I don't say this every night. Best show of the tour, Chicago, Illinois, right here. <laughs> and we've, we've played a good number of shows on this tour so far, you know? I can't believe it. You know, um, I don't really know if we're supposed to talk about this, but we were originally going to film elsewhere, a um, little place you might have heard of called New York City, but that all got switched around, and, and we're here in Chicago. And... <laughs> Yes, and I'm, I'm sure you've noticed the cameras tonight. You look lovely for them. You look just great. <laughs> so what do you say about a couple slow jams? You down? Let's do this. What it rain?
This next song, if you've, if you've seen videos online, you've heard me talk about it. We weren't originally gonna put it in the set list, but because of a few of our friends on the Live Journal community, we have decided, yes, give it up for yourselves. Because of you guys, we decided to put it back in the set and play it a certain way we thought you might enjoy. So this goes out to the Live Journal community. Thank you. Thanks for sticking with us. It's called My Heart. with me, Chicago.
of God. I mean, being on tour is just basically playing shows, eating food, and stopping at truck stops and getting unbelievable things that you will not find in any other store. Fun things we do on tour. Basically, all we do to sum it up on tour is just wake up super late and always say that we're going to get up early and work out. But we get up late from the night before eating tons of cereal and after show food. And we wake up really late. Some days, if it's an off day, we go to the mall. Other days, it's sit around, normally do sound check, and then we ride bikes or just do something outside or just get online and talk to friends. But there's the occasional fun day where we all just go crazy and do something fun. make hilarious videos like Easy Cheat and um, Knocko Bell. I said Knocko Bell because <laughs> it's probably copywritten. Um, and we love DZ Cheat. <laughs> <laughs> there was one off day. It was in Minnesota. We did a lot of cool things like we took old time pictures. I don't know like, what do you call them. Like old fashioned. Like where you dress old up. Old western pictures. Old western pictures. Thank you. Road amazing roller coasters. They were actually really scary. Most musicians dream of, you know, being able to tour around the world with their best friends and which is exactly what we're doing. Um, is such a blessing. If you look at our band from like an outside perspective, we just look like the biggest bunch of idiots and we have the most dumb voices and do the most, literally all we do is sit around and sit on our computers and just act like idiots. Yeah, like basically we haven't grown up since 12 years old since we like hung out like years ago.
So we're in Oklahoma. So first time here as a band. And it's bright as crap. I can hardly open my eyes. And we're playing here. And uh, I don't know, we're about to go walk around in the town because we have nothing to do. Should be fun. And uh, Taylor's right here to tell you some more info. I'm very hoarse, and it's pretty discouraging. It didn't matter. It didn't matter where we were or the size of the crowd. Like when we went into, when we broke into the verse of Born for This, and I held out the mic for the first, the first line that the crowd sings. Every night, my ears, dude, just it was awesome. There's no feeling like that. We got to write another song like that. Guys having a good good time? Please say yes. Well oh, good. Hey, I wanna know of you people in this room. Of all of you, I wanna know who in this room owns our first record all we know is falling. That's awesome. Well, we just wanna say thank you. Thank you for uh, for supporting us in that way. That's where it started, you know? So thanks a lot. This next song goes out to you guys. Enjoy. Oh, Chicago! Well, tell me where our time went. Where did there was time well spent? Oh, get shot here on my break. Get shot here, I can't. 
to say You can't run away, you can't run away Usually the first show of tour, we're always we're always like, man, we gotta change this. We have to change this and this. You know, we have, we just tear apart the set list and rearrange it. But this time we didn't change much uh, at all. I don't think we we're like, let's try it a couple more times. And it just, you know, the more we did it, the better it flowed, and so we stuck with it.
Our daily life is a circus. I have a day sheet right here. This is uh, a day in the life of Paramore. This is our schedule for every day. It's really weird to not have anything planned, but somebody else plans out your day for you and they give it to you on a piece of paper. But it makes life easy. It's pretty awesome where we have to be, exactly what time, and uh, exactly what we're doing, what time we go on stage. We know when we wake up in the morning we're gonna have a meet and greet at some point in the day. We're gonna have a sound check. And a lot of times there are little radio visits or performances that we have to you know, wake up early and do. There's things like that that you know are gonna happen. Some days you wake up stoked to do it and some days you're like, oh my gosh, I feel like crap, I'm miserable and I don't wanna pretend that I feel awesome. Like you feel like it's just Groundhog Day, you know? <laughs> we got to go to a lot of cool cities on this tour. I just love going to all the cities so I can eat the food that they have there that we don't have here. Zach talks about food every time he talks. <laughs> Sorry. Chipotle, I know, I'm so hungry right now. Um, a couple of my favorite places that we went to on the store. I like the West Coast. Seattle was really sweet. We saw Def Cat play in their hometown. That was really fun. Played a really cool festival. I played my new drum kit. It was amazing. And it's <clears> uh, basically like the woods out here. It's just leaf camo. It's amazing. We got to play Central Park, which was Beautiful. I've really never been to Central Park and especially the area we played, uh, it was cool. You couldn't even see any buildings really and you almost didn't feel like you were in New York but you had the New York crowd and it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. And I love, I love the South too, like the Southeast. Is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. Like kind of where we live and um, <clears throat> I don't know. Well, I, like, I like playing Memphis and Arkansas. Uh, we played in Little Rock which is where I was born. So it's kind of my hometown. Had a lot of family there that had never seen us play before, and it was, it was really an amazing thing. It was awesome. We played in Memphis, which was another hometown. Uh, it was cool. It's always fun to have your family come out. Chicago was unbelievable. It was really cool. I had some really good pizza. Chicago was probably one of my favorite shows, and we got it on film. What can you? What more can you say? Um, it was really sweet. Like, I love being in Chicago, and the show was just amazing. And uh, people were dancing, singing so loud. Like, it was probably the loudest show on the tour. Like, people were practically bouncing off the walls, and it wasn't a small place. It was like a theater kind of setting where you had, like, sort of grand looking column type things on the walls. <laughs> it was super just fancy pants, but like, there was a rock show there that night, man. It was awesome. The kids, I don't know if it, you know, Chicago's always great, but I don't know if it was because the kids knew they were being filmed that they went extra crazy, but it was unbelievable. I saw like some kid in the front, like, head banging to like our soft songs, just because the camera was on them, but it was awesome. I loved it. So it, was, it was one of the best shows on the tour, if not the best. It was just some raw passion that night, raw energy. There were times at that show I just kind of stood there and was like, I don't believe this is happening. And I'm so psyched we got it on, on film because it's, it's, one, it's a show I, I don't ever want to forget and I can't possibly remember every moment of it without having it recorded so I'm glad I'll get to relive it anytime I want and you will too well hello there I just got thrown this nice little bracelet and I'm gonna wear it because I like it thank you Whoever this is from, it's beautiful. So we're back! Woo! Final Riot, part two. Hey, so before, before we get into this next song, there's, uh, there's just something I, I wanna talk about for a second. Um, if you go to our merch booth tonight, you will, you'll see a hoodie there, and if you buy it, the proceeds are going to an organization called Love 146. Uh, it's a great organization that is dedicated to creating awareness 
um, and people all over the world about sex slavery and sex trafficking because it exists and it's happening right under our noses. And you know what? We can do something about it. We can. A lot of us are young, but uh, I think that, that that's, that's one of our strengths is our youth. And I think our generation can really make a big difference in saving lives. Yes. So if you don't have the money to pick up a hoodie tonight, we understand. But the least you can do is educate yourself. Go to love146.org, learn all about it, and see if there's anything you'd like to do. It's a wonderful, wonderful organization. So this song, <laughs> yeah, this song goes out to all those children who we believe deserve a chance. It's called We Are Broken.
just want to be home We just want to be home Just sing that with me We just want to be home With all your heart We just want to be home Again, again we just want to be home We just want to be
platinum. Woo! So we went to New York to play our show in Central Park. They told us that we needed to go to the label. We go over there and we didn't know this, but our family was there and we kind of did a fake interview. I had to like sort of separate from the pack for a little bit to put some makeup on and try to look presentable. And when I came back, I went looking for the guys. I was like, where are they? And I thought I was late because everyone was getting ready for press. So I started walking around and I walked up these steps. It turned out to be that Haley accidentally walked upstairs and ruined the surprise party. I walked into a room full of everyone we work with, our families, everyone. And as I, as I got there and people started to see me walk in, music started playing. I was like, that's what you get when you let your heart win. And then like over here, people were clapping, woo, yeah! Like the rest of the band was sitting in a room because we weren't supposed to go upstairs yet. And everybody started so, and she was like, oh no, and she ran downstairs. And I ruined our surprise platinum plaque presentation party. But it was cool because we went back up and everybody was like, yeah, yeah. It was crazy, you know, these huge plaques with the platinum record in the middle. It's just, it's amazing to think that a, a record we put out went platinum, sold a million records. It's, you know, it's definitely a dream come true for me. This is so crazy! I can't believe it. Uh, hey, yeah, sure. This is like pictures of the war. It's like photo shoot. It was uh, an amazing accomplishment, something that, to be honest, in my wildest dreams, I would have never even thought that happened. It's crazy because, especially like at this time, like in CD sales, like no one sells that. It's been such a blessing to be a part of something that really made it. It feels good. We have an amazing label. We have an amazing team that works for us. And like they always, you know, we, we work hard as a band, but they're always they're backing us completely on everything that we do, every, every decision that we make and risk that we take, they believe in us and it's cool to see them, you know, really push and, and work hard for us and to know that we like got to this point together. It was just a really a great day. There it is, it's on my wall if you want to pan over there, Brandon. <laughs> um. Slightly larger than the gold black, I would say. I'm definitely thankful for it, and I feel really blessed, and uh, I want to thank our fans for that, because they're the reason we, we were able to, you know, to get to that point. New York was, that was a huge day for our band, and, and for everyone that works, like, on anything Paramore. Like, everyone just got had such a great feeling and sense of accomplishment that day and, and, and pride and it was, it was good. It was a, it was a cool way to kind of end the U.S. album cycle of Riot. The last night, I guess, of the final Riot tour was, it was epic, I guess. Like, for our set, everyone came out during our last song, Misery Business, and like, people were like air guitaring and uh, people were just like standing on top of our ramp like Pirates of the Caribbean style like swing. It's like 20 dudes on the yeah, stage. Yeah, it was, it was just like, it was just a party, you know, and at the end we all like bowed, the whole tour bowed together and... That last night was insane. And then right afterwards, which uh, people didn't really get to see, we walked backstage and everyone was so hyped up from that. Everyone was just, whoa! Everyone was screaming. Just, it was the most unbelievable thing ever, like, like, even me, like I just, I became this crazy man that just started yelling louder and crazier than I've ever yelled ever. And it was like the most, like, joyful experience ever. I tried to slide and I like <laughs> just totally killed myself. I wanted to die. I wish that could happen every single night. <laughs>
secret chord that David played me, please, the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major lift, the baffled king composed. I feel like our fans are more like friends in a way because you can go outside your tour bus or, or the security gate at a venue and, and play frisbee with them or throw a football and it's just, it's really cool. We have a really encouraging and motivating fans. Like we, we keep in touch with them on LiveJournal and try and update them with everything we're doing and the cool thing is you can talk to your fans about life. They're real people to us, you know? They're not just fans. That's what's gotten us here, you know? That's, that's why we're the band we are. Music business is in a place where you can't rely on numbers, you can't rely on money or spots on a chart to be successful. Like, it really is now about how happy 
it makes you and how, how you feel at the end of the day when you go home or when you go to your bed or your bunk. Like if you don't feel like you're in it and you're happy about that, then you don't have nothing. You know, you, you just, you can't rely on anything but the fact that, you know, it's music and you got people that are singing it back to you. Like, that's what I love, you know? I don't care if, I don't care if we, we write a record, it flops and we're done because we're still not done because we love our fans and our fans love us and I don't think any of that stuff matters, any of the material things. What matters is, is going out there and playing a show and having people scream words back to you and be just as passionate about the lyrics as you are about them. We literally have the best fans ever. Um, we really care about our fans whether they know it or not. We really, we really care about them and, and I feel, I feel like they actually in turn really care about us and you know can see, they, they can tell when we need a break and they can see you know when we're going through a tough time and um, rather than you know complaining and stuff they they're there for us you know and um, so yeah they're, I don't think we could ask for a better fan base ever. Paramore could have been such a different band if we wouldn't have gone the route that we did and um, known how important fans were and really made it our goal to be in contact with them and just to keep in touch and really just to be friends with them. Uh, and we have the best fans in the world. It's definitely what has gotten us here, you know, besides Jesus, you know, he's the reason we're here, but all of our fans and our support, the support that they've provided for us and has just been amazing. It's just crazy because you'll, you'll play like five shows in the Northeast and the same like 15 or 20 kids will be there at every show. I've met a bunch of kids that are like, yeah, this is like our 27th show. And I'm like, wow, like, <laughs> it's just amazing. Like we'll play the same set every single night of a tour and kids will come to multiple shows and which is, you know, I don't know if they know it, but it really means a lot to us. It's just amazing how much time, like, they spend on us, like, by making us gifts and buying us things and, you know, waiting outside for us to come out of the bus. This tour was awesome. We had meet and greets. We played foosball with them, and they played, like, did different things and hung out. And it was a lot of fun because we've done meet and greets in the past, and, like, they're just, like, kind of, like, sit at a table, and they'll just come by and we'll sign stuff. And it's just, like, really awkward and not really like fun like you don't really get to hang out and get to know anybody or just like hang out and play games or whatever so bringing the foosball table out was like really cool because like um well me and josh basically mauled everybody and um that was great their passion for our music makes me want to be better like makes me want to just do the best that I can at everything, even if it's not music related, you know? It's people that we would never know if we didn't play music. That's it.
is complete now just thinking back to the band we were then and the band we are now I think we've, we've still got a lot to say and I'm excited to say those things on the next record and to feel the way I feel about Riot I don't know I'm psyched Riot has done us well it's changed my life Just thinking back like to the Final Riot Tour, uh, it was like the only, one and only tour, besides maybe the Jimmy World Tour, that I woke up every day and I was like super excited to like hang out with the dudes on that tour, like all the other bands, and um, like Paper Out was just like, those dudes were so much fun to hang out with, and Phantom Planet were like the coolest dudes ever, and such rock stars, they're so cool. And um, Jack's Mannequin, and I mean, just like everybody just together, collectively, it was just like such a good tour and so much fun and just having, I don't know, we just had a huge light show and just like we thought really hard for our, our show and it was just like, I just felt like it was really well put together, right? Yeah. I don't know, I didn't finish school, so. Super. Um, it was super. We've accomplished so much more than we've ever, any of us could have ever imagined that it's weird to say that we have to make new goals now. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know, I guess my, my goal and hope for Paramore in the future is continue making good music and continue gaining fans just like the ones we already have, and uh, I'll be fine. The only thing we can really do is make a record that, that we're personally super proud of. So yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a, a cool new chapter of everything. In the future, for Paramore, we're going to write this third record. I'm kind of kind of nervous because we just, you know, this riot was so big for us, and 
we didn't expect it and now we have to kind of beat it in a way which I don't think anyone in our band is is just gonna let us write an okay album and I know it's gonna be better than Riot but uh, it's just it's always nerve-wracking because we want our fans to be you know pleased with what we come out with so but it'll, it's exciting you know we're, we're gonna record it here in Franklin and we'll see what happens.